Hi there. Welcome to The Preventable, the podcast giving you a seat at the table with conversations about the intersection of alcohol, drugs, and mental health in everyday lives. Take a seat and join us. Welcome to The Preventable. With me today is somebody that I'm just really grateful to have, Amber Campbell. And Amber is a lot of things. You are a prevented staff person. You're just a kind heart, but you're also a yoga teacher, yoga instructor. What did we agree on? What What is the proper nomenclature? Uh, yoga teacher is good. My official designation is experienced registered yoga teacher at the 500 hour level, which sounds very fancy, but it's just uh, the 500 hours that are required in order to uh, lead other teachers uh, as well as offer continuing education for teachers. So you not only teach yoga, but you teach other people how to teach yoga. Yes, I have um, in the past. I've graduated, I believe, over 75 200-hour yoga teachers. Um, and Whoa. that's very um, – it's been very, very rewarding to be able to share not just in the, like, yoga studio – maths out sort of yeah. um, setting, but also in like a lecture setting and really diving deep into um, philosophy and psychology and physiology. Because there's like a lot more that goes into yoga and teaching yoga than just stretching. We were talking about that before we started recording, yes. right? Like people are like, oh, I'll just teach yoga. Mm, no, not so fast. No. Yeah. What people think uh, when they think about yoga is asana. So um a big scheme of things in yoga philosophy, there are eight limbs of yoga. And um, the eight limbs of yoga lead us to samadhi, which is union or this um, present moment awareness, this um, connection between uh, mind, body, and spirit. Mm. And asana, the physical practice, is just one of those eight limbs. So you have seven limbs that have nothing to do with curling yourself into a pretzel. Right, you know? right. But uh, here in the West, we've really taken yoga and molded it into something that is more aesthetic-based. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's the value of, you know, becoming a yoga teacher or just doing a yoga teacher training is that you really get to dive deep into the more transformative areas of what yoga really is. I assume this has a whole lot to do with yoga, but you are like one of the most calming presences that I have ever – like when you first – when you first were interviewing, like you walked in and you just seemed just very calm. And like the, you bring a calm. Is that is that a, a testament to yoga or has that always been your – sort of persona. Yeah, definitely not. Always <laughs> been my persona. I think that um, over time, um, so I've been practicing yoga since I was uh, 16. So it's been um, coming up on 14 years. And, um, you know, I, I found yoga when I was having really severe anxiety mm. and, and just panic attacks. And the, my quality of life was not the best. And I found yoga totally unrelated to my mental health. One of my friends was like, oh my gosh, we should go to hot yoga. Oh yeah, right. Guys, guys like girls that do yoga. Totally. And I was like, I got to get that yoga butt. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I went to my right. first yoga class. And what just absolutely shocked me was um, the power of my breath. Mm. As the uh, instructor was talking me through it, um, just realizing that as I slowed down my breath, my heart rate slowed as well. And it was really the first time I'd felt that connection between my my physical body and my mental body, mm. you know. And the breath is such a such a link to that. We know that um, just from the way we live, you know, the way we live on a daily basis. That when our breath speeds up, we tend to get more anxious. We tend to tighten. Mm -hmm. um, when we slow the breath and we breathe deep we tend to be more calm and we tend to be more relaxed. Um, so it really is that link between the two. So um, uh, circling back around, at the very beginning when I first started practicing yoga, I was in no way 
um, calm or relaxed in any way. And then, um, you know, as I've really incorporated the practice into my daily life, it, it's given me the tools I need to to stay balanced and to stay in this homeostasis between such you know, a great vocabulary word. <laughs> Thank you so mm-hmm, much. Mm-hmm. Um, between this like necessary anxiety and this like you know too too calm that you just don't even care. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like try to exactly. find this in between where um, you know that things are happening around you and you are aware of um, you are aware of events and you're aware of um, how things make you feel, but you don't let them rock you as hard as you we know. do a stress presentation for teenagers and we talk about the fact that like stress is normal. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's but what can be challenging is how we react to stress. And so we talk about the difference between you stress, which is good stress. Right. And then distress, which is the stress that makes you very uncomfortable and that might you know send you into panic or maybe coping in an unhealthy way or something like mm-hmm. that. But it is it's finding that balance because you don't want to be apathetic about life and you don't want to be like, eh, it's right. fine, it's fine, it's fine. You know, mm-hmm. you don't want to be that. But then at the same time, you don't want to constantly be reacting to the stressors that life brings. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Um, and I think that's absolutely what a, what yoga is a tool for, finding this like the middle way, as the Buddha uh, would say, you know, this um, not not too much, not too little. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just the right amount. Huh. The Goldilocks. The Goldilocks, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um I have heard because I've I have done some trauma work um, and and I've I've certainly heard of you know trauma informed yoga and I know that there are organizations out there who are really trying to make sure that yoga is accessible meaning that even people with you know limitations or challenges can can do yoga and trauma yoga is is something that I've definitely heard about but I had not heard, embarrassingly, I had not heard of 12-step yoga. Mm-hmm. What the hell is that? Yes. So 12-step um, uh, yoga, or uh, the organization is called um, Yoga of 12-Step Recovery, or Y12SR. Uh, it's founded by Nikki Myers. Um, it's this combination between the, som- the somatic experiencing of the yoga practice and, like, this this physical feeling and then the cognitive approach of the 12 step programs. Mm -hmm. So the practice itself is this link between the two. We open with reading the 12 steps. We uh, read the ground rules, which is just, which are just rules that help to keep the space safe Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, anonymous. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we do a themed reading like you would see in AA. Mm -hmm. And then we have open discussion. And open discussion can be, you know, a reflection of where you're at in your recovery. It can be how your day is going. It could be what you're struggling with. It could be your favorite recipe. Mm. You know, it's just this safe space to be able to be in community with others who who are also experiencing um, the struggle. And um, when sharing is complete, uh, we move on to a yoga practice. So the importance, the important part of the yoga practice is that the yoga practice is themed around what our discussion was. So we took the time, yes, so we took the time to really talk about uh, the topic. So let's say it is samskaras, habits. Um, We took the time to talk about it and to kind of process how it applies to our lives and where we're seeing it come up and how we're feeling about it. Um, But then we uh, take it to the mat and we really tap into how the idea feels in our bodies and how do we see it come up in us in movement and how do we um, hold the awareness of where where is it coming up in mm-hmm. our minds in moments of stillness and in moments of movement. All right, so I have to interrupt you. Is there something like this for Al-Anon? 
Yes. So um, because and I can just imagine because as somebody who has been to Al-Anon at several points in my life and it's not necessarily for me, but I understand it and I can certainly empathize with it. But at Al-Anon meetings, like, wow, there's a lot of feelings there. Right. And I can imagine and even even in open AA meetings that I've been to. There's a lot of joy, but sometimes there's some sadness and sometimes there's some real like vulnerability. So will people open up so much so that they might be like crying or, ah, you know, and 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 are you trained to deal with that? And how does that work? Yes, yes. So um, in Y12SR, all A's are welcome. And huh, interesting. I, I find that this is so, 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 so valuable. And by all A's, you mean like an, a Narcotics Anonymous? Yes. A hero, you know. I've seen, um, you know, uh, process addictions, um, sex addiction. Um, gambling, Gambling, I bet. overeating. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen Al-Anon, alcoholics, uh, narcotics. It's, I've, I've seen, um, I've, I've experienced a lot of um, people who come to Y12SR from other 12-step programs but also people who've never even heard of 12 Steps. Yeah. And they're just curious, might, might they have an addiction? Oh, or interesting. Might, okay. they, might they love someone who yeah, has Yeah, right, addiction? exactly. And so um, I think that is one of the most valuable things. Um, as I, so um, my my drug of choice was, um, al- was is alcohol. And, um, you know, being able to be in community with somebody um, from Al-Anon, let's say, and hearing them talk and maybe um, hearing them speak about uh, their mother who might be their qualifier, um, that can help me to better understand how my partner feels yeah, yeah. Um, as, as I'm going through my recovery journey. And uh, I, found, I found that to be so valuable, um, as well as, you know, I'm sure... Others also see that and and can link principles and themes as well. That doesn't have to be um, only people from Al Anon mm-hmm. experience this mm-hmm. or only people from NA experience this. So I'm sorry if this is too personal of a question, mm-hmm. but so if you said that you really became interested in yoga when you were 16, did it, when your kind of active addiction you know, really kind of uh, took hold, I guess you could say. Uh, did Was yoga still like presence in your life or had you kind of moved away from it and then come back now that you're in a recovery journey or had it, you know, had it always been there or? Yeah. Yeah. I think is that, that too personal. No, it's we not. Can, we can cut it out. No, no. I'm just thinking like yoga and my recovery are so closely linked in that as I was um, as I was moving through active addiction and and learning to quit over and over mm. and over, you know, my yoga practice did the same thing. Uh, I oh. was I was practicing every day, seven days a week, you know, and then I wouldn't practice for two months. And then, mm. um, you know, I had sort of the same relationship, I think, with yoga at that time and sometimes that's just how life happens sure like you're, of course. you're able to really keep you can a good focus practice. on something and yeah and then you can't right but I felt like um as I was a practitioner and also um in active addiction that my practice was so surface level like I knew mm. the principles and I knew what I was supposed to be doing it was like textbook kind of. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's like I had the knowledge, but I was not applying the knowledge that I had. Hmm. And, um, you know, I started practicing yoga when I was 16. I started drinking when I was 18. And, um, you know, I, I did both pretty consistently um, mm-hmm. until around uh, the pandemic, when the pandemic hit. And, and I'm sure so many people also felt the the ramp up of yeah. alcoholism during the, the yep. pandemic, just loneliness and stress and panic, um, which are all things that can can be temporarily soothed 
with, um, you know, alcohol. And there came a time when I was just like, I cannot, I Mm. cannot keep doing this. And I made the decision to, to get sober. uh, But I knew like I had been in and out of AA for those 10 years Mm -hmm. and I knew there was value in the 12 steps. Um, But I think for me, AA, I couldn't find an AA group that felt like I was looking at myself, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like I was <clears throat> surrounded by people who were similar to me, you know, my peers, like age and, and, um, gender. Yeah. And, um, so when I decided to get sober for the 50 millionth time, I, uh, that is when I found Y12SR hmm. and it, it was like this light clicked on where, I had all this knowledge and all these things I was very, very, very passionate about and realized that if I could apply this, this yoga practice to my sobriety, that, um, you know, I could make this sustainable. Mm -hmm. And um, so I I attended some Y12SR meetings. And as soon as I felt like I was in a space where I could lead others, I got the certification. And uh, You know, one thing that I'm just so struck by, and I know, I mean, I've been in this field for 15 years. I know this is something that I should know by now. But what I just am continued to be struck by is the fact that everybody's, first of all, everybody's so different, right? Mm -hmm. Just, it just, everybody is so different. There is no one size fits all. But everybody's recovery journey is so different. Absolutely. And what works for one person might not work for somebody else or what is a trigger for somebody might not be a trigger for somebody else. And the fact that there is a group of like-minded people, not just in terms of, you know, you're all abstaining from something, but beyond that, right, that you're looking for balance and that you're achieving social supports. And I mean – as much as everybody finds something different for them that works, when you boil it down, it's about connection and it's about finding coping strategies that are helpful, not hurtful. Yeah. Right? And But, but that can look, whether it's karate or yoga or cooking or whatever. For sure. It's just so fascinating to and me. I think that's one of the things that ties the 12-step programs to yoga so closely is that both are so embedded in relationship. Yep. So in the 12-step program, we're saying like we have lost this intimate relationship with ourselves, with our communities, and with our higher power. Mm. And here are these 12 steps that are going to kind of guide us back home. And in the yoga practice, um, the eight limbs are also about relationship. They're about relationship with your higher power. They're about relationship with your community and with the world and with, um, you know, with yourself. And it's the parallels are just um, yeah. And in the meantime, you're building community with people who can empathize or who can say like, "I got you." Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's that. And and when people don't have that, that's that's what can be pretty devastating. Yeah. So I love that you've found this community, that you're continuing to build it with an, other people. Um, thank you so much for being here today. But also you spoke at our speaker series just to kind of get the word out, because is it I mean, is it just me or do a lot of people not know about this resource? No, n- not a lot of people know about okay, it. Okay, so what do, what can we do besides, you know, being on this podcast that so many thousands of people are listening to? Right, but. right. So it's, it's slowly growing. Okay. Uh, um, the organization is slowly growing. Um, people, we're getting a lot more um, trainees through, the y, through Y12SR. Um, they're offering, like, a lot of scholarships for people mm, so okay. that they're able to, to do that. Like to get trained? To get trained okay. in order okay, to be cool. a, a space holder, someone that can lead Got it. Uh, meetings. Um, I currently hold Y12SR on Friday nights at Brick City Yoga in uh, South City mm-hmm. in Benton Park West. And um, I do, I would love to give a shout out to Kate Ewing, who is the owner of Brick City. Um, 
she is just a wonderful human being in general. And um, but she has really not I don't want to say surprised, but she's really um, surprised me in that she has stood by Y12SR in a way that fights the stigma around mm-hmm. it. Yeah. You know, um, in, in the yoga community, we tend to be very good vibes only. Right. Which sure. just makes me cringe every time because <laughs> uh, all vibes are valid vibes. Right. But, oh, my gosh. We need a shirt that says yes! that. Um, all vibes are valid vibes. Yes. That is great. OK. Trademark. Yeah, um, exactly. Trademark it. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Um. But she has been amazing about putting Y12SR very much in the light, you mm-hmm. know, not letting it be this like side thing that, oh, we hold this class for certain people, yeah. you know. And it's um, like on Friday evenings. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you feel like you're going in the back door to yeah. get there. Yeah, yeah. And she's just been very amazing at like being open with people about it and being supportive in, in marketing it and um, making sure that. People in the community know this is a resource mm-hmm. and that they are they are not on their own and that other people are experiencing these same difficulties and have found tools through their yoga practice in order to help to address them. So if people want to attend the class, mm-hmm. um, do they just go onto Brick City Yoga's website or, I mean, is it an open class? Can anyone go? Or? Yeah, so anyone can go. Um, I would recommend uh, going onto Brick City Yoga's website um, to register just so that I know that you're coming and that, um, you know, we have space. Sure. But uh, drop-ins are always welcome. Um, the It's a $10 suggested donation. Something about um, Y12SR is that all of the classes are donation based. Hmm. Um, so, ten dollars suggested donation. Um, if that, if you cannot donate that, you are you are more important than your money. You know, it does not matter. Do, donate what you can. There's also an option for people who have more resources that would like oh, to cool. to donate. You know, another class for someone else. Sure, sure. Um, and uh, so you can do that online, or you can do it. Um, through uh, just in person when you yeah. when you show up for class. This is awesome. I hope that, you know, I hope that people are listening and that if nothing else, we've given them another resource, whether they're in recovery or considering their relationship with substances or maybe they're thinking about how they can support somebody that they love. Um, thank you so much for being here. Yes, thank you for having me so much. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate you. If you like what you heard, if you want more with Amber and you want to find more about um, 12-step recovery, please consider, no, 12-step yoga. Did yoga I say right? of 12-step recovery. Yes, exactly. If you want to find out more about that, mm-hmm. please consider rating, reviewing, and subscribing. Thank you. Thanks for joining us at The Preventable, brought to you ad-free by PreventEd. PreventEd works to reduce or prevent the harms of alcohol and other drug use through education, intervention, and advocacy. Please visit their website at prevented.org. Like what you heard? Rate, review, and subscribe to stay up to date with what we are serving on The Preventable.